Welcome. This is now video number 7 on the construction of hyperreal numbers. In this video, we will talk about hypersets. Our first step is here to introduce the enlargement of sets. We already know one example, which is a set star r, enlargement of the real numbers. Let us see what we mean by enlargement. We call x a subset of the real numbers and we write star x its enlargement into the hyperreal. Let A be a hyperreal number. Remember that A is constructed as the equivalence class of a sequence of real numbers. We are going to say that A belongs to the set star x if and only if the set of integer n for which A n is an element of x belongs to the ultra filter. In other words, when almost all the elements a n in the sequence belong to x. Take b, an element of x. Then the extension of b that we call star b is clearly an element of star x. We conclude that x is therefore a subset of the enlargement star x, just like r is a subset of star r. Therefore, if we want to look for non-standard elements, we need to look at the elements in star x which are not in x. Let us take an example. Let curly n be the hyperreal associated to the growing sequence 1, 2, 3. Each element is an integer. So we say that n belongs to the enlargement of the set of natural integer. In fact, n is also larger than any natural integer, so it is in the set of unlimited hypernatural numbers. Here is an important theorem to understand and remember. The enlargement star x of any finite subset x of R has non-standard members. The proof starts by considering x as an infinite subset of R. Then we build the sequence A with elements all different from one another. Then it is easy to show that for any real x, the set of integers such that a n equal x is finite and therefore not in the ultra filter. It follows that the sequence A is not equivalent to the constant sequence x, therefore the hyperreal number cannot be written as an extension of a real number. Hence, A is a non-standard. Here is a list of exercises on the enlargement of sets. The first one in particular consists of showing that the set X, that if the set X is finite, then it is equal to its extension. I will let you work on those other problems. The construction process of hyperreal numbers can be applied to various objects. To construct an hyper object, we build all equivalent classes associated to a sequence of objects. In this way, we can construct a hyperset, hyperpairs, or hyperfunctions. Hypersets can be divided in two types internal and external sets. The internal sets as a set we can construct. Let xn and yn be subset of R. We are going to write big X and big Y sequence of subsets. And we are going to say that big X is equivalent to big Y if and only if the set xn is equal to yn almost everywhere. Finally, we write curly X as the equivalence class of the sequence of the set big X. This is what we call a hyperset. Let us look at the elements in an hyperset. The definition is going to be similar to what we have done previously for the enlargement of a set. Remember, hyperreal numbers are defined by a sequence of elements a n. 
we are going to list the elements of x as all the hyperreal numbers a for which the element a n belong to the set x n almost everywhere. We say that the hyperreal belong to the hyperset if and only if a belongs to the listing of the elements. But we should be careful on how we are using this symbol. Remember that curly x is an equivalence class. It is therefore a set, yes, but a set of sequences of set. Therefore, if you take this notation literally, this statement would always be false, since you are simply looking for an object which is not explicitly in the set defined by the equivalence class. We should always remember what we mean by A belongs to X. In fact, it could be good to introduce a new notation, for example, by adding a circle so that there is no possible confusion. If curly X is defined as the equivalent class of a sequence of set Xn, star X is defined as the equivalent class of a constant sequence. So we see that the listing of the elements in star x is defined by all element a such that a n belongs to x almost everywhere, which is consistent with the definition of star x we gave earlier when we talked about the enlargement of a set. But this symbol here should really be written using the new notation. Let us build an example. We write x1, the empty set, and define xn inductively. The sequence big X is given here with x1, x2, x3, and xn. We define curly X as the equivalence class of big X. It is easy to verify that for all integer m, m belongs to the hyperset, since m belongs to almost all the set in the sequence. In fact, we can also verify that all subsets of all integers up to m belongs to x. Using the hypernatural number capital N, we can calculate n minus 1, and we verify that almost all of its elements belong to a set in the sequence of the hyperset. Therefore, n minus 1 belongs to x, but n does not. You can easily convince yourself that the listing of all the elements in x is a set of all hypernatural numbers stri strictly smaller than n. It is tempting to abuse the notation and why this. We could here again introduce a new notation with a circle, which by definition would be equivalent to listing all the elements. Another example is built from the sequence big Y we see that the hypernatural number n belongs to the equivalence class of y, which we are going to write curly y. We can easily see that none of the natural number belong to the hyperset. We can see that the hyperset y is given by star n from which we remove the elements of the hyperset x. And we verify that the listing of the elements in Y is given by all hypernatural number larger or equal to N. We could again abuse the notation or write it with a circle. To summarize, the set we have constructed are all internal sets. An internal set is by definition a set which can be constructed 
as the equivalent class of a sequence. Alternatively, we can think of it as an element of the enlargement of the power set of R. We will see that all internal sets behave nicely. A standard set is the enlargement of a subset of R. It is of course an internal set since it can be constructed as the equivalent class of a constant sequence. We have obviously internal non-standard sets, such as the ones defined in the previous two slides, and we have external sets, which cannot be built as the equivalent class of a sequence. For example, the set of real number, natural numbers, or the set of non-standard real and unlimited natural numbers. We will see this in more details in the next video. Finally, we can verify that for X and Y internal sets, we have all the following set operation forming an internal set.